Hi, it's Carrie. I'm a health professions librarian at Towson University's Albert S. Cook Library. If you've identified a research topic or an answerable question using the PICO framework, then you're ready to start searching for evidence. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to translate your PICO formatted topic into an effective literature search in PubMed. We're going to use one of the questions I used in a previous video. In patients with post-operative nausea and vomiting, is aromatherapy as effective as the standard of care in reducing nausea? Our population is patients with post-operative nausea and vomiting, and our intervention is aromatherapy. That's really all we need to get started. That's the P and the I of the PICO. I always recommend documenting your literature searches, so you may want to open up a document and keep notes while you search. First, let's mentally map our topic. If you think of a Venn diagram, you have two circles that overlap at a certain point. Let's say these two circles represented all of the literature that can be found in PubMed, a platform from the U.S. National Library of Medicine. That's 32 million records. That's a lot. But what we want to find is literature that represents our concepts. It should have words related to post-operative nausea and vomiting, and also aromatherapy. Let's start searching in PubMed. If you are a Towson University student, faculty, or staff, you can access PubMed through our A to Z database list on our website. Otherwise, you can access PubMed through the web. Let's build each concept one at a time. Our search history gets saved while we search, so we don't need to worry about losing anything. It's a good practice to put our search terms in quotes, especially in PubMed, which tries to automatically map your terms to other suggested terms. But it doesn't always work great. Putting quotes around your search terms turns off mapping. Using quotes also allows you to search a phrase together as a phrase. Let's start with postoperative nausea and vomiting, which is pretty consistently defined in the literature. We'll put the whole phrase in quotes. Okay, that's a start, but what if some authors used postoperative without a hyphen? We'll need to include that too. We'll add it with or, because we would accept either one. Wow! This condition is sometimes abbreviated as P-O-N-V. Let's add that too. Okay, we've built a pretty comprehensive concept for post-operative nausea and vomiting. Now we're going to narrow it down by building our second concept. Remember that our search history is saved, and that will be under advanced. Let's search for aromatherapy. Again, I prefer to put even single words in quotes for consistency. Wow, we get over 1,600 results. Let's add aroma space therapy with or because we would accept either variation. Click search. That's a good handful of additional results. But let's clear this out. Aromatherapy would be a good candidate for what's called truncation. We can truncate the word with an asterisk and find all the various endings without having to type them out. Wow, 1,645 results. Let's say we were specifically interested in aromatherapies containing ginger, so we can add that too. Aromatherap or aroma space therap or ginger. Our results really went up, but now it's time to combine the two concepts. Click on Advanced. Find the three dots, the ellipses, next to your first concept, and click Add Query. Now select your second concept by clicking on the ellipses and choose Add with AND. You'll see your search string populate into the query box. You can copy and paste this search string into your document so that it will remember how you got to these results. Let's click Search. And we get 73 results. And in fact, as you scroll down the page and start to take a look, you'll see that they look pretty good. You might decide to go back and revise your search, and that is totally okay. Perhaps you wanted to add peppermint to your aromatherapy concept. You can also use the filters that appear on the left. You can filter for things like date range and language. 
I hope that you were able to learn something new from this video. Leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you find it helpful. Librarians are here to help and I would be thrilled to hear from you.